Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Prime Talk. Today I'm really excited to have a special guest and a really good friend. I'm having Khen Saban. Khen is the founder and CEO of Game On Group, which is a leading A to Z e-commerce group of companies that provide solutions for, for example, right, just a product R&D, global sourcing, shipping, selling products inside China. That's pretty unique, right, and much more. But he's also the founder of two technology startups uh, uh, for e-commerce solutions. So uh, Khen, welcome to the show. Wow, welcome. I'm also excited to be here. It's been a, a long time uh, aspiration to talk with you, Yoni, in this show. So I'm happy. So, and now we are doing it. Yeah, thank God. So excited to have you and uh, it's our pleasure. Uh, so today's episode is going to really be the story of Khen Saban. You're going to share with us everything. You know, uh, who are you? Where are you from? Where did you grow up? How did you begin your professional career? Station to station until we reach out to where you are today, especially with the world of e-commerce. So uh, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Now, you know what? Okay, I will try my best to, to shorter a long story. Um, how I started. So when I was at school. Uh -huh, was... Even earlier, where were you born? Let's start with ah, that. Okay, yeah, okay, I was born in a place called Kiryat Malachi. It's uh, in Israel. It's uh, it's like a small town area. Uh, my father worked for the army of Israel uh, until so the died. IDF, the Israeli Defense Force. Yes, he was part of the IDF, and my mother is uh, a teacher for special uh, children, and uh, I'm the the youngest son uh, of four. And the uh, computer was my life. From, from age of five, I really, for me, computers, it was like a dream. We are talking about the 80s. Now I'm revealing my age a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, I'm a little old. And, uh, and in the 80s, uh, around the 85, I got my first computer. It was uh, really exciting. Did you get it by mistake or you knew that there's computers and you wanted to get one? Because for me, the first computer we had, my parents just got it for, I didn't even know why. So yeah, it was already there. Was that the same for you or you knew that you wanted a computer? Let me tell you what happened with the first computer. I really wanted the computer. We were going to a place, it's called the Shechem. It's like the, the electronic place of the past. We've been there. This is like the Israeli Best Buy back in the yeah, 80s, you know, in the States. Really, really, it was like that. And, and everybody was buying foods or whatever. And I was drooling over uh, watching um, a sort of a Donkey Kong, but it was not a Donkey Kong. It was like a software teaching math. And I was drooling on it almost every time we came to this Sheke. And then my father decided to buy this computer because he also liked gadgets and everything. And he wanted to buy it for my older brother. So he's four years older than me. So he bought it for him, but it was for me because I took control. And uh, I remember, I don't know if people that see this show know that in the 80s, uh, the computers didn't come with an operating system in the beginning. It, became, it came with the basic. It's like you need to, to input the, you know, codes and whatever. And I remember. Are you talking I, about MS DOS or are you talking about before that? Before MS DOS. Before, so before MS DOS. I remember MS DOS where you have to kind of write what you want to yeah, do before Windows, -DOS, before you had the window. MS DOS, there were like uh, versions and then the, the, it's for the progressive people. Before it came with basic. Okay. So, so um, we started with basic and then. Uh, um, as a child, you don't know the, how you operate this kind of thing. And suddenly there is a disk. We didn't understand. So uh, there was like a book. I remember the color. It was green book, something like this big, all in English. And I was five. And I started <laughs> to copy. I, I could not read English, okay? I'm Israeli. We speak Hebrew. And right. five. So I started to copy the, the codes and started to see what happened. So it took me it took me a while, but I was able to operate the game, the the the, the math game, and it was love at first sight. And around the age of uh, let's say, I think it was the third grade, I read this book at least five times, and I was given my 
my friends i was creating like small games that maybe today some stupid but it was like the 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 doom of uh, of the 80s everybody all my friends came to play those games like uh, something similar to snake and and it became like my first love so computers was my first love and um, as i grew up changes the computers all the time because they are evolved 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 um my first business actually was when i was almost 13 before my bar mitzvah you know and uh, i was a child but i was like the whiskey for computers everybody that wanted to buy a computer came to me to my home um and and it become like uh you know like a mecca for for uh, people that want to, to know about computers, they came to me. I, I work very briefly in a computer store around the area where I live. And then the, closed sto the store closed, nobody have anywhere to buy. So they came to me and I was just 13. So in the beginning, I was like, you know, accompany the people uh, how to, uh, how to buy a computer, what kind of a, a consultant to how to buy a computer or a machine, right? Yeah. You're like kind of a consultant. Exactly. I was like the, the guy that the, they ask all the question and was like the, the excitement. You're the computer the... rabbi. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they call me the doctor, by the way. Yeah, the computer and doctor. I, nice. And I remember that. And, uh, and it became like my thing. And, um, and, I don't know if you know that, if you've been in that time period, a computer geek like me, but in that time there was no internet and, um, and I became like really big in games and everything. So, um, so everybody that had a computer came to me around the age of 13, it became a business. I started to take money for it. And um, in, the, in the end of age of 13, more close to 14, I opened uh, something that called Saban Computing. It's a, it's a company for selling computers. And um, by the way, it's still alive until today. My older brother is running the company now. It's, it's, very, it's very famous name for in the area where I grew up. Amazing. Um, and, uh, and that company, really, we, we were the first uh, a computer store in the area. But I still, I didn't care about business. I care about the computer. So I, I started to know coding. I started to do small games. And, and, then, and then it's connected to what I'm doing now. Around of age 14, 15, I don't know the exact age, but I was like, the, the, everything was around games and how we can get the new games and the cool programs and the stuff like that it's not like today very easy to to achieve so there was things that called bbs's so the people of the 80s and 90s remember something called bbs's bbs's BBS is, yes bbs bbs is bulletin board system it's, bulletin um, board system bbs yeah yeah, it's like for the old computers, you know, you remember the noise, like the fax machine that you connect with <laughs> those noise. So, so you, were, you, were, you were connected to a computer like that. Right. And then after you, connect, you, you are able to transfer data from computer to computer and to speak with the other, we call it CISOP, to the other CISOP of the computer. And... Um, and my second business, not that I closed the first one, but I was operating a BBS and people around the globe, uh, really, literally around the globe, calling me every day, 24 seven. It was like a madhouse in my room. So uh, I started, you know, trading games, trading, trading apps. And uh, this was like the first e-commerce sales because um, what year was that? What year is that? You were you were a teenager. What was the year that basically you started trading online, around, computer to computer around the world? Yeah, it's something like 94, 95. 1994, we you're already in e-commerce. That was the first yes, elements of e-commerce. Yeah, it's before the internet. Yeah, before computers were connected to each other, but there was no global thing. We just you were able to really kind of find yeah. each other somehow. And, 
and then and then we started to take money for for like uh, you know a fee monthly fee if you want to connect to my bbs you need to pay us monthly so it started like that and it was amazing because you started to know people around the globe it was interfering of my my study to tell you the truth I remember it's the high school yeah you're still a teenager yeah. yeah high school high school and then it, it, it's really hurt my my study but I remember one time really it's uh, I hope I hope I uh, I will uh, make it in English clear because as you know English is not my first language but <laughs> I will try so I was so you know all night you know we are geeks by then we really geeks all day talking in the computer blah, 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 on the on the keyboard and and one night I talk until the morning I didn't sleep and then in 8:30 or 9 something like that there was a test I was finishing talking to some guy from United States for us it was like the holy grail we are talking to United States guy I was part of a, of a very famous group of hackers back then it's called Razor 1911 you can google it today they still alive and then we, we Okay, so you're saying that uh, you're also part of this hacker group, the Razor group, uh, 1911, so uh, go ahead. Yeah, and then I was talking to this guy, uh, I just joined, whatever, and it was very exciting. All night I didn't sleep, and then 8.39 in the morning, there is a test. I'm going to the test, and all night, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like writing like crazy, and then I came to the test, and I don't know, my mind was not on the test. I was like with the, with the pen and the paper and I need to write the answers and I started to type. But uh, uh, like a keyboard. keyboard. Uh, so funny. No keyboard, it's like the, <laughs> then I, I understood something wrong with me. Yeah, a little bit too much on the business side of things and you got to stay in school and finish with the, your education. Yeah, but, but in the end, I finished with honors. It was, I, I'm okay. But um, so I, I, uh, I started this business. Uh, it, be, it became very, very successful business. But I knew that in some stage I need to go to the army. So I created the business uh, uh, later. I, 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 after the army of my brother, I told them, "Ah, you don't need to go to to search for work. Come work with me. Be my partner. I give you half the company." So let me let me clarify here, so everybody understands. So in Israel, uh, uh, it's uh, the army is mandatory for male for men, and also women is three years for men, two years for women. So typically, when you finish high school, when you're 18 years old, you go for to to serve the army in Israel. The idea of the Israeli Defense Force for three years. Um, yeah, so you yeah. did that, but your brother also did that. And when your brother uh, finishes uh, three years of service, he said, "You know what?" Come work for me. Exactly. I'll do 50 50 in the business. Yeah, because he's four years older than me. So once he finished the army, I'm, I'm, I was in the start of it. So, um, so we, he came to the business. He started to learn the, the business, and our store became very successful. I finished school. After finished school, I learned uh, also computers because the army, uh, there is like a department in the army for computers we call it mamram now people call it shmone matayim 8200 but back then there was mamram so this is an elite computer technology unit of the idea of the israeli defense forces and you were part of that uh, unit and you did what three years or more yeah i needed to do more but uh so i'm asking i usually know they do a bit more yeah yeah so i was uh, but i studied the, the army gave me two years of study so I was studying until the age of 20 because you go to the army directly. Then I done one year of service and I was discharged because of a health problem that I have with my stomach. Um, and after I was discharged because of the health issue, um, the company that I built was still existing. So uh, I, I started to come back to this company and there's no company you're managing with your brother yeah 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 yeah. exactly exactly i came back but but part of my friends from the bbs's era started to push me for a startup and then they they we didn't call it a startup back then but we call it like a venture of of the gaming world so um some of the people lived in the state 
So it was my first, uh, you know, international collaboration. Uh, we opened a company for uh, something we developed. Uh, it's like a glove that you put on your hand. It's like uh, exchanging the mouse. It's give you like uh, a Z axis. When a mouse goes X and Y axis, this gives you also the Z axis. We developed it, it was going very well. This was the first time I, I also went to China and, uh, and um, started to know all the manufacturing pr process and everything. So let me, let me try to understand this product or startup you, 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 you built, you were trying to build, uh, create this special glove that is supposed to replace the computer mouse. So you can basically wear the glove and scroll on your computer instead of the mouse? Yes. I oh, was very, uh, very cool, yeah. I, yeah, so uh, after, after this venture uh, succeed in, in a way, okay? It, we did not succeed, success, uh, success like you measure it now for startup companies became unicorns or whatever, but there was an end product and we sold the patents. Some of them sold to uh, to Nintendo. Then they created the Wii from one of our patents. So it was oh, like, that's cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is cool. And uh, I came so back. I, I, start, I just want to kind of take a pause here. As far as you guys can see, is uh, the the current name of his group or company group group uh, group of uh, companies is Game On because from exactly. a very young age, we are a very young position. Uh, you know, Ken is all about the the the, the, the games, the computer games, and stuff like that. And even the startup company he created here, and it's the intellectual property that he created, trickled all the way to Nintendo to create, um, you know, the devices that they they are using and uh, providing to consumers out there. So it's amazing to see that um, innovative uh, spark and in, in, in passion for for games and technology and computers from a very young age, and how it already trickles on and probably touched most of us. I played with that Nintendo, so that's something that you kind of helped uh, put out there in the market. But yeah, let's continue. Yeah. So, so um, I, will, I will explain more about the name later, but you judge the right accords. Uh, but there is also another meaning to the name. It's, it's like a personal meaning. And I will explain maybe later as we evolve in the story, maybe. Keep there we suspense. go. Okay, yeah, okay. So, uh, <laughs> so what, what happened? I, I returned from the United States. I started to think, okay, what I'm going to do now? What I'm going to do now? What I'm going to do? I cannot, I could stay in the stores and in the store, it was one store and, uh, and you know, live my life, but it was not for me. I wanted to grow. I wanted international. I started to, to touch the international side. And at that age, I understood something that most of Israel people didn't understand back then. It was, you call it now private labeling. Uh, I didn't have a name back then. We call it OEM or ODM, but there was no like a fancy name. Like so what's OEM labeling. stand for? OEM, what does that stand for? O OEM is, is when, uh, when you want a product to have your own logo. Or this is OEM that you design the, the, the package and the, and the logo. But if you're talking about ODM, ODM is like you are creating the product, you can change the mold, you can play with it, whatever. This is ODM. So there is ODM and OEM. Got it. So, so this is uh, what I want to start putting the years on this. So what is the year? Basically, you return back from the United States. You, you saw it kind of the... Go ahead. Yeah, it was around 2002. Something like that. 2002 is where you pretty much uh, come back from the United States. You had this startup company yeah. that you eventually uh, sold it sold to, the, and, and its intellectual properties to other other parties. Uh, and exactly. then you you realize that um, you know you, you and just have being in the store is you know is not not for you. You have more passion, more job to do things. So exactly. uh, uh, um, you kind of venture and 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 realize there's an opportunity to create OEDM OEM. Uh, manufacturing for for uh, uh, you know, companies or entrepreneurs out there in the world that want to create products, uh, and that's 2002. That's about 20 years ago. All right, let's, let's yeah. keep moving. I'm keeping. I'm trying to keep quick because it's a long story, but interesting. Yeah. I promise you. Yeah, we got 20 <laughs> years to, to capture in a few minutes. So let's keep going. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, I started to to get involved into the import business and creating product in China. And my aim was to create them, like you say today, private labeling. I, 
I took it from the side that I know best. It's computers, it's gaming. So I started to, to uh, import gaming products like joy pads, like uh, wheels, like many, many cool stuff. And, and who was the main client? Was that your brother with the, the computer store or was that like computer stores around the country? No, it was, it was computer stores around the country and big uh, chain stores around the country. And suddenly my mouse, I was, I was, it was funny. I started to understand the business even better. It was like all the, the, there was like two brands, Microsoft or Logitech in the mouse industry. And the other brands were like Chinese brand. Everybody buy the expensive one, the Microsoft one. The Chinese one were very sold, very cheap compared to those mouse. And I created like the middle brands. It was like fancy box, fancy way of looking on the shelf, but it was in a price range, like it's in the middle, like Microsoft is more expensive. Mine is in the middle. And there was like the cheap crap. And it was funny because we were selling, we were selling the same products in different packaging and different branding by really, really different pricing. Like the, the, the one that we branded was like super high comparing to the low and people were buying the high and it was the same product, the same product. It was like crazy. So, so uh, then I started to learn the business. I understood that you need to develop your own, your own self in the product. So we become like a very uh, a big company in Israel uh, that's selling to store, to chain stores, gaming products. And then as it evolved, I said to myself, okay, I'm selling a lot now. I had, I had like salespeople and everything, but it was becoming boring for me. I'm telling you the truth, it's becoming boring. And I said, okay, what is my next agenda? I said, okay, if I already created the, 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 the line and everybody buy my, my stuff, let me open a, like a new kind of chain store. You, you see me? Okay, so you're saying that you, uh, you found a lot of success, uh, you, know, you know, providing all these uh, private label uh, products, especially in the electronics and computer uh, category in Israel for all these chain stores. But as the success came, also being bored came. And what was your next step? Yeah, so I was like, okay, what's the next step? And I was thinking, okay, I'm good at computers, good on import. Hey, I have my own brand, everybody like it. So let's start a new kind of chain stores. Um, it was like a combination between computers, multimedia area, like you can sit down, listen to music, whatever, and buy speakers like I am. And also gaming area, like you can buy all the console, PlayStation, Wii, whatever there was back then, Xbox, and the, the, the kids can play. While they play, there was like a coffee shop inside the shop. What was it called, this uh, store? Game On. Uh, which which, uh, which, which uh, places in the country where you had this store? Be'er Sheva. Be'er Sheva in the south, yeah. Kiryat Gat. Haifa. You got to, which also sounds in Haifa in the north. Because I remember yeah. in my town in Ranana, we, there was a store where you can play games. I forgot what it's called. Uh, so, my brother was really good at it. He was uh, playing um, uh, Halo. He was uh, really, uh, really good at that. So it was, was Xbox, uh, X, uh, Xbox uh, 360. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it was like an Xbox shop, I think it's called. I forgot what it's called. But um, yeah, this is like 2000. 2006 so uh, all these gaming uh stores uh, you know uh, proliferated uh, on the, around the, the state of israel and you were in that business as well so it's pretty cool yeah it was most likely they were buying products for me but okay so <laughs> so nice. it was it was like uh it was a success but it was like a strange combination to some people so it took time it was very expensive to create those shops because it was like 300 meters and the real estate in Israel is very expensive and the people here are very expensive to pay. And it was like, uh, in one way, it was very professional, but very hard. And uh, what happened is like, they became like chain stores that started to emerge everywhere and just cutting the prices and you, you, your profit become lower. So I... I started to think, okay, how to increase the, the, the sales. 
So I saw I had in my warehouse so many stock. I tried to do like sales uh, for the people on the store, but it was going okay, but not huge. So I started to sell on eBay um, and I became very good, very, very good on eBay. And I'm talking Okay, so about, what year was that when you started uh, selling on eBay? What year was that? I Okay, eBay, I, I, I was around 2002 already selling, but not huge. I was not. Yeah, like, when you made that push into eBay with your, uh, your inventory. 2005, your something like that. I became, uh, yeah, 2005, I was like, like selling about 50, 60,000 US dollars a month. It was all from my stock. Some of them refurbished, like returns from clients. Some of them were new, and and suddenly, and suddenly there was like a, like a aha moment. You know, it was like okay, I'm selling, but the amount of effort I'm doing to sell is so low comparing to regular stores when you need to pay so many salaries. So many people that like, until you make the first dollars, your heart and soul, you invest and, and you say, thank God that you make some profit. So it was, it was, okay, let me think how I will develop it. So from that point, I started, I opened also another, another website uh, and it become with the years, not automatically. In the, uh, a few years later, it become very successful. It's called sababai.com. Um, and uh, some company bought it. And really, I, I was like enjoying what I'm doing, but I still had so many commitment in the offline world. And I didn't, it, it, was, it was very strange to think that you can base a full e-commerce uh, company because it was not known back then. In, in 2005, nobody, was thinking, okay, let's close like uh, I, I, back then yeah. it was a lot of money, uh, about 1 million shekels a month in turnover. It's, it's yeah, it's like uh, 300,000 a month. Even uh, here, uh, it's about you know, over 3 million a year. It's pretty good for, for yeah, any yeah. e commerce business. So I guess the, the, the challenge for you was hey, I mean, e commerce is supposed to be like a bonus, and the real business is supposed to be on the street exactly. in the physical stores. But it's kind of uh, working in reverse. The main business and the main profit is online where the store is just, uh, it's, it's, it's a struggle. It's, uh, it's too challenging. And what, and what broke me, and what broke me in the end, two things. Two things really broke me. Uh, I started to see that even that I have the physical stores and I'm selling to, to uh, people around Israel, you know, my goods to their store. Suddenly, they were starting to import by themselves small amount of product in a very, uh, you know, some from eBay, some from Deal Extreme or whatever website was coming. And, and you started to lose the business to online. And then it was from the B2B side. And then I said, OK, but I still have the B2C because I'm selling to the end clients. And then the, the one thing that really broke me there was like a, a company online that is comparing prices. So we were used to people come to us with already the prices they compare online. But you talk about Zap? You talk about Zap? Zap, yeah. Zap was, was AP, like... Yeah, Zap. I used to use the back one. Yeah, Zap. Zap, everybody go to Zap, check the price. You cannot uh, do anything. <laughs> you say, okay, or you give them the same price or you cannot sell. So it was like uh, everybody used that, but this didn't broke me yet. What broke me is like, there was like one about 50, 60 years old guy coming to my store and gave me like an unrealistic price for an Xbox, I think. And I told him, listen, I, I don't know where you came up with this price. He told me it was selling on eBay. And I said- So hold on, he wanted to sell you an Xbox for very, very cheap? Not to sell me to buy from my company, but he gave me, gave me a price that it's not even my own price when I'm uh, buying lower, it. So very low price. You wanted to buy for a very low price? Yeah. And then he told me, I asked him, okay, show me where it is. I, I want also to buy <laughs> told me in eBay. And then I went online and I saw, whoa, really it's cheap. And then I started to calculate. I said, what I'm doing here in this business, I don't understand. I have a problem, but how you can close a store? It's like it's very complex. You have people, you have you have banks, you have so much. 
So, so then, then the turn point was the realization, but then there was the force, the first war. I don't remember which one because Israel have so many, uh-huh. but there was so, like it's probably the 2006, first, the Lebanon war. No, uh, yeah, exactly. No, I don't think it was Lebanon because it was like so there's 2009, it was the Gaza war. 2009 and then when and then there was like in 2009 exactly i think rockets was, rockets on the south yeah. you live in the south yes. of the area so and, they and i live in that area and we could not go to work for a few days and i was like what i'm doing now? who will you know the government didn't help you out you you need to pay salaries anyway and then you sell online and i said to myself okay there is war and uh, i'm making money online but the company doesn't make money. I'm losing money then because about 10, 11 days, we didn't work. And for me, it was huge. So I take, I really was in pressure in that time. It was not all uh, sunshine and rainbows. I really was, you know, in a crisis. Struggling, yeah, struggling. Yeah, what, yeah. What, what to do, what to do. And also scared, you know, war, whatever. And then I, I decided, I, I also didn't feel well. I'm cutting the story short here, but I was also hospitalized and done some sort of a surgery. And I said, you know what, Ren? Really, it's, it's, oh, oh, I forgot. I forgot. When I come back from home back then, I came around 11 at night, 11.30, and I had a small son that just born. It was, it was around, I think, two years, not more. So he, he, he was waiting for me in the window. And when he, when I come with the, we live on a Moshav. So in the Moshav, you know, it's, it's like, like a Moshav is like a, compared to a small, small village in Israel. Yeah. Yes. So he, he was waiting for me in the, in the window and he saw my car. And I remember it really, really, Yoni, I'm telling you, I have tears in my eyes. I remember him. So exciting, see me from the window. It was, he was almost like fainted from excited when I came. And I thought to myself, God, I'm coming to, to home. I have maybe 20 minutes with him. And, and I killing myself for what? And then I decided that night, really because of my son and because all of the other story, backstory that I tell you, that I'm going to do a change. I don't care what it will be. I'm going to do a change and I'm going to focus on something that many people in my country back then don't uh, gamble. They don't gamble on e-commerce, but I did. So I literally, literally the next day closed the shop, closed it. I had contract, I have obligations. I had so much money I needed to, to make a turnover and you only i'm telling you really it's a story that that every time i tell it it's like giving me goosebumps i'm telling you the truth it's like i i brought uh like um trucks big trucks i had about uh, 20 staff something like that and they would they didn't believe me they said what we are closing I thought, of course we are closing they thought i'm joking all the investment, everything. I took everything in one day, put it in a warehouse in the Moshav, three stores, close it. Was I really, I didn't know what I'm doing. I just wanted, I said to myself, if I will not do it, I will never do it. So I, I, I really, I closed the stores. It was very hard. Also financially, what you will do, you're like in a hole. What are you right. crazy? So I took the, the phone. I still have it here, by the way. It's still in my, uh, it's the same phone. It doesn't work, but it's the phone. Not, not, not really working now. Mm-hmm. So, so what I done, let me fix the camera, is I had an office in China already. In the story I told you we were importing and I had a small office in China. And I told to my staff, the office was to, to help me import, okay? It was not for selling others uh, or creating for other products back then. And I was talking to my staff there. She's still my staff, by the way. Her name is Kelly. And I told her, Kelly, what should we do? I don't know what to do, but I want to sell 
everywhere online, on my own website, on eBay, and also on Alibaba. You know what? I want to sell on Alibaba as well. So this is already 2009 and Alibaba was already uh, an open marketplace yeah. like that? It was not an open marketplace for worldwide, but it started, it was uh, more for Chinese sellers. So uh, she told me, okay, I can register and help you and do whatever. But I thought, okay, what we will sell? I don't know what to sell, it's B2B. She said, okay, I'm selling, uh, let's sell, um, com uh, not computer, uh, pets products. I was working on, uh, on a company back then for pet products, I have good prices, let's sell it. And we really started to sell like a factory. We were not a factory, but we introduced ourselves as a factory. And Yoni, I swear to God, I was sitting next to that phone that I showed you, didn't know what to do, really didn't know. I wake up in the morning, I, I, I'm, I'm ready for rush day, you know, in a regular day, so much work I had. Suddenly what I'm doing, I'm doing online, what, what I need to do? Mm -hmm. I, I, so I was like literally crying because I understood I understood there was like a huge load now. What, do, what will I do, Yoni? I don't know how. And then into I the unknown, to, yeah, into the unknown. Really, and I prayed to God. I swear, I prayed to God and I told him, show me a sign. Show me a sign that I chose right. Really, just show me a sign. Mm -hmm. And then I got, after I said that in my head, second later, somebody called me to the phone. Okay, nobody know the number. It was like a number I never used, but somebody called my phone. I pick up the phone. Who is it? They told me you are Ken Saban. Yes, we are looking for you one year. I said one year, me, what, what do you want from me? They said, we are from uh, the court, the courthouse. I said, okay, which courthouse? What are you talking about? They gave me a name. Do you know this guy? I told them, yes. They told me, you know, there is money here waiting for you. He owes you money. Somebody owes yes, you money? 40,000 shekels. You are, you, it's waiting for you. you. We just didn't know where you come from. Yeah, it's about $15,000, yeah. Yeah, I was, I swear to God, Yoni, it was like the, ha, ah, God is ah. listening, God is listening. I said, okay, they proved to me they are legit, they are really, I really got the money. Then I, I all my fears I put aside, I said, screw it, let, let, I'm going all the way. So I started to work on that uh, Alibaba, on my eBay store on my regular store, started do crazy stuff on e-commerce that back then nobody done, like unique sales, like things that nobody done. Like in my website, people were buying stuff. I was telling them, okay, if you take a picture of yourself saying, uh, I buy from Sababai, uh, I, I will give you like a free gift or a discount. Back then it was not like now. And, and all the time I like uh, show those pictures everywhere in blogs and whatever, and everybody like giving the So you buzz. created content, you created viral content and viral marketing where there's exactly. buzz, there's energy around it. So you, you keep some pushing more traffic in and more conversion, yes. more sales. Exactly. And on Alibaba, it was like, whoa, suddenly I understood. I said, okay, what is missing? Everybody buying from Chinese companies, but I'm not Chinese. I'm Israeli. When I started to learn the business of the pet products, and then I said, okay, I will give them better service than they used to. Mm. And then suddenly- Your I disadvantage got... was the advantage because the disadvantage, you're not a Chinese factory, exactly. but you're still an Alibaba positioning as if you're a Chinese yeah. factory, but that becomes your advantage because you're living the Western world in a way. You understand exactly. the Western mentality a bit better and you, use, you take that into the advantage so their, their satisfaction level is in the highest possible so you have a better advantage from your uh, uh, competitors. Exactly. And then, and then I realized it's not about the money. It's about the attitude and about trust. And once I gained that with the potential clients, suddenly the numbers started to look like, like science fiction to me because... <laughs> The, really, the only the first order was six thousand dollars. I was so excited, like I won the lottery. Six thousand dollars. Somebody 
really second second order was about 15 then 160 and then we we got a, an order for almost 300 thousand US dollars it was like huge you give a person 300,000 <laughs> oh, really yeah. it's too much and then in the end of the year we sold really literally in the first year we sold almost six million dollars in the first year it was amazing and I said to myself I'm, I'm in the wrong business I'm this is what I need to do so the factory owner the factory owner of uh, the pet company reached out to my team in China and said, listen, I have a sales team of 12 people. You are doing the best work. You are doing three times of all of them. I want to offer you like a partnership. I will give you percentage of my company for real, but you are going to do the, the sales for us. So that was like an amazing offer yeah when a chinese tells you a partner with a chinese factory that's uh that's pretty remarkable when they yeah. recognize your success like that yeah and, and then i flew to china and signed and started and suddenly i'm an owner of a factory so it was whoa i'm, I'm part of it so after a while after half a year i got a phone call same phone by the way that i showed you same phone phone call hi this is lena okay lena from where from alibaba uh, okay what do you want uh, we we saw the numbers of what you are selling. We want to offer you something. I said, okay, what do you want to offer? We are expanding our international sales and we want to offer you something that call global partner. And we are going to create like many partners. Every country, there will be like one partner and for big countries, there will be like two, three of the best of the best. And you will lead the other B2B sellers into a platform. This is your job. I read the contract. It was crap. <laughs> really, <laughs> you don't make money. But I said, you know what? What the heck? It's Alibaba. It's exciting. I like excitement. I like challenges. And uh, we started off in like about 80 partners, something like that. In the end, only stayed around 12, 13 because their demand were very high, very high. So let me let me get this straight. So Alibaba contacts you saying, you're very successful what you're doing in the platform. You're from Israel, right? Yeah. So in Israel, you'll be some sort of um, a representative, of, of, yeah, partner and representative of Alibaba. So if an Israeli uh, yeah. you know, manufacturers and, and B2B companies uh, wants to, yeah. uh, you know, uh, onboard into the Alibaba platform, you're the gate, you're the, you're, yes. you're, you're positioning exactly. is exactly. to help him in and, and make him succeed on the platform. So that was a strategic global move for yes. Alibaba to do it in Israel, but in many other countries. And yes. what year was that when they reached out to you and you started? Um, it was 2011 or 12, something like that. So about two, three so, years after you were already in Alibaba, yes. you know, yes. experience, yes. experiencing yes. all the success. Yes. Got it. Yes. Okay. And, then, and then Alibaba reached out and it was like, I said to myself, okay, there is no money here right now, but I will make money from that. I will see how to make. And the, the department was very very new all the global department of alibaba and i was feeling like i'm i'm part of something new really uh, and and they gave you like the opportunity to be a really really part of something that you help create mm -hmm. so i took it very seriously and i became like the top sellers the top company we won so many really Yoni, I have like a shelf of, of more than 30 trophies I got from Alibaba. Like we sold more than any other country in the world. We done the biggest growth. And while the years passes, Alibaba really trusted me more and more and more and gave me more opportunity. I become like a BD, like a business developer of my country and my era. And I connected many, many companies to Alibaba and Alibaba really took my advices really to heart. Something I, I really uh, fight for and believe, like I, I really believe that the diamond industry, for example, in Israel, that is very well known, very big, can be a very major player in B2B in Alibaba. For example, it was like a big fight. 
convincing Alibaba to give them a chance and the, the industry here. And in the end, I connected the industry to Alibaba. It was a very big success, very big deal. It was like uh, millions of millions of dollars deal. It was uh, supported by Israeli government, by Alibaba, by the diamond industry. Everybody were talking about it. Uh, I even created the first ever O2O. It means online to offline auction house between diamond industry, the diamond exchange of Israel and the Chinese companies. We created a platform called Ali Auction in Alibaba, and we created like an online and offline. People were buying diamond offline and bidding them, some of them also online. It was amazing success, amazing, crazy things. And then I started to, to do convention with uh, for Alibaba and really a lot of things. I helped them create Alibaba Business School. I, I started that some project to bring uh, business people around the globe into China to learn how to do e-commerce. It was so interesting, so fun. But all of the while, as Alibaba is interesting, opening for you doors, and also it became, I, I must say, in the, the future, I made money. It was not for free, uh, but, but I grew up my business. I become, I said to myself, okay, Khan, Alibaba is nice, Alibaba is big, but you need to develop Game On. So Game On started to develop its way into the e-commerce world little by little. My vision was to help really, it's because of all the history that I've been through, I was feeling obligated to help people like the small and medium business to grow their business. It was how you help them to grow. And then you realize that like, Amazon private labor is one thing. And when they want to buy from China, there are so many challenges, so many problems. So we decided to, to focus on that. So we had a factory in China. And we had the small office that I told you about. One person was in that office back then. And we started to crew it. We started to bring people, R&D people, to understand how to develop products from our experience for the knowledge of those people. And then we started to buy machinery because we understood that the people that work on, on private labeling, for example, they are scared. They don't order mass production in the beginning. So you need to give them like a, an option to do their own logo, their own brand in small amount, but, but you don't go to the factories for that. So we bought CNC machines, laser engraving, uh, machinery for printing, everything. So we become like a small factory and then we become like a warehouse, R&D. And then everything as you know, is connected to logistic. Okay, so what do you do? So I started shopping for logistic. Who will work for me in logistic? So I started and, and do trial and error over the years. But because of my position in Alibaba, many of logistic companies in Israel trying to connect to Alibaba. So I started to learn the logistic side from, from within because many companies big companies in Israel were sitting on my head, let me connect to Alibaba, let me do, let me that. And then I started to become friends to those companies and I learned like big times, how logistic work, how the last mile works, how everything. And in one part, there was like an opportunity for me to open like uh, for a very major Israeli company, like a Chinese, a, a place for them, like, uh, you know, like a subsidiary for that company in China. And we were like in the middle of making it happen. And then the Israeli partner decided that he, he will not go through with it in the end. But I was so excited, you know, we turned off my excitement. I said, no, no, I, I need this. I <laughs> need to do this. So the company that I was dealing with for, for doing that, the logistic company was a very well-established company. It's called Grateful Logistics. They are from 1993, uh, uh, already in the business, but they don't have e-commerce logistics. They had like regular logistics. 
but they are very big and they were very impressed by me. So they said, oh, you know what, Chen? Don't bring us the client and we will not do with him. Let's do with you. I said, okay, but what can I bring to the table? They said, you are bringing the, the e-commerce side. We are missing the e-commerce side. Now you are in charge of the e-commerce department in our company. Help us build it. We'll give you percentage of our company. And, and that's the beginning of our logistic company in China that until today is really big and really helping a lot of sellers. So that's another company, it's called Grateful. The, the R&D company that help people buy and source and make, it's called Global Kingdom, okay? It's located in Shenzhen in China. And the uh, Grateful Logistics is in uh, seven locations in China, okay? We are in charge of the Shenzhen uh, area but it's seven places, but as time progress, and you know, there is always changing because in this game, you always need to be on top. You always need to be the first. You always need to be the best, really. Otherwise you die. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? So I started also to introduce because I became very good at this in, in China and e-commerce. So you see, I started to introduce brands into the Chinese market. So we started with the diamond industry and also small companies that some don't know. Uh, but then came also big companies like fashion TV, like companies, big ones. And we started to do crazy sales for them. Really, it was- So what do you num- sell on the, so these, these brands and, and products, they sell on where? On the Alibaba okay. Chinese marketplace or Taobao, Tibo, yeah. which one? Exactly, now, now you're talking. We are, we are talking about Timo, we are talking about Taobao, we are talking about, uh, we, we even sell on other platforms, not only on Alibaba. And we JD. JD, exactly, Pindodo, all of this, we, we sell on social media because it's very strong in WeChat, for example. And as we progress, we became very strong in the China market. So we introduced big brands and those big brands give us opportunity also to produce for them product in China. So really the company grows to, to like major. So um, as it grow, we also had the need for technology development. So we opened like a company in China for developing technology for e-commerce. And for that, we, we had a new startup that I'm not owning right now. We sold it already for a few millions. I cannot say how much yet, but it's it's nice. It's called e-massage. We, we develop like a Uber for massage uh, people that you want Uber, to- Uber, you want to get a massage? So do you, boom, yeah. you use the, the phone app and we get a masseuse yeah. to come in? Yes, it's more. It's a little more complex than that, but- to But this is uh, for which market? In Israel and China? No, 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 world? Chinese market. Chinese market, wow, that's pretty cool. yeah. We created like a whole level of massages. Everything is top line. The best masseuse, they are everywhere. So yeah, so uh, marketplace for for your for m- 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 massage, which in China is a big market, big demand. Exactly. Uh, it's a whole uh, tradition there. Yeah. Yeah. So the, we also sell them products and whatever, but it's very interesting and it's very big. Um, and then I said, okay, we finished with that. We already sold. So what we will do? So I started to do crazy things. You know, my mind always working, always what is the next big thing? So I said, okay, we have so many private labels, companies. Really, we, we introduce so many products to private label companies. And I help so many sellers over the years. And some of them been with me for many years and I was privileged also, Yoni, I'm telling you the truth, even though it doesn't come to my pocket, but I help people do exits on Amazon. I, I help creating the brand. I help creating the product. It's an amazing experience. It's an amazing feeling to help people to be, you know, not even huge. Some of them, you don't make them huge, but sometimes you help them, you know, pay the mortgage. Yeah, make a living, make a good living, you know, have a good life with a good uh, income and salary so that they have a good quality life and all that journey. Because if I reconnect this to 2009, you were on a crossing point, you were a breaking point where the physical, uh, you know, in-store business model was just collapsing on you. 
And then you exactly. have that sign that here's a little bit of money so you can really try to push through um, uh, on the Chinese thread that you had, uh, you already had a kind of a small office there to service your in-store, uh, a physical store uh, operation in Israel. And then one, th- you know, keep uh, pushing the threads and one vertical after another, be able to create excellence in performance and then open that up for yourself, for your own needs, yeah, right? And yeah. then open that up, open that up, open that up. So it touches all these verticals of, you know, manufacturing, logistics, R&D, software, uh, technology, all these verticals together and also representing Alibaba, opening up the marketplaces for B2B, right? But also B2C inside China. These are very unique. So you're experiencing the whole e-commerce boom for the past decade from within, from the from the stress of the physical business model sort of like collapsing, exactly. you found that your success there and you create all this ecosystem and environment for others to kind of follow in and all these uh, amazing verticals. And that is a, a, you know, an amazing journey to, to experience. I want to kind of package the episode and say what we got so far, because it's been, uh, there's a lot of energy, a lot of fire. So uh, born and raised in Israel in the South in the Kiyad Malachi area. And then uh, from a very early age, you know, drawn to computers, a five-year-old, already got the computer. Uh, this is in the 80s. I uh, was able to really master it, understand what's going on and became this uh, whiz kid for the whole uh, neighborhood and the whole community around him where he lives. And then um, even at, uh, you know, uh, being a teenager, already yeah, he was in business and, and uh, selling computers and being involved in the industry. Uh, um, and then even before he was in the army, he was giving his brother, uh, you know, the opportunity to be a partner in the business 50-50. Uh, so he hired his brother when he was still in high school after his brother finished his uh, military service. Then you enter the service uh, for a top elite unit, but uh, you you uh, uh, end your service a bit early because of very medical reasons for uh, after uh, more than a year. And then you kind of try to find yourself. You go to the United States, you create this uh, startup for, you know, this glove, uh, you know, this kinetic glove to, to, to replace the mouse, the computer mouse. Eventually the intellectual property got sold uh, all the way down to a Nintendo and, and the Wii uh, products. And then uh, 2002, you basically land back in Israel uh, try to figure it all out. And then you put yourself in a position where you're going to start importing uh, 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 products into, into Israel and help with manufacturing, OEM, ODM. 2005, you already realize that you have the opportunity to uh, you know, open physical stores, uh, put products in the stores, your own private label store uh, products, is mostly in electronics and computer uh, um, gadgets. And then uh, um, to 2009, um, the stores already kind of, you know, there's a war going on. The stores are struggling. And uh, and all between those years, you already started selling on eBay and, and being an e-commerce seller. And that uh, brought you to a tremendous success and realization that it's not a bonus or add-on business. This is the business. And the physical stores will basically drag you all the way down to a really a deep crisis. So in one clear day, coming back home, seeing your son, realizing that also family is very important to you, uh, your ability to enjoy the family and not be always stressed out and do something that you love. Uh, you pivoted completely, and we just touched how much you still love the game, and the game is still on. Instead of sitting, having a game over, it's game on. It puts you on this amazing, miraculous journey um, into the you know space of e-commerce, all the way to Alibaba, being the representative, helping many others get into Alibaba, helping many others creating their brands that they, they have the vision for, the research and development, uh, creating everything in between, the logistics, um, the quality inspections. There's so many verticals in, in between that you helped out. Um, and then it brought you to this moment where you have uh, the game on group with all these verticals inside, but you're still playing, you're still innovating, you're still passionate about it, you're still driven about it. And really your focus is less about the money. The money takes care of itself. It's more about what can I do to help others? What can I do to help businesses? What can I help to, to do consumers? And that is a passion that drives you all together. Did we get everything correctly so far? I, I really could not sum it up better than what you just done, really. it's This is game on. What you explained, this is game on. Amazing. So thank you so much for sharing. It's been uh, fascinating. Now I want to finish up the episode quickly with two points. The okay. first is somebody wants to reach out and connect with you. Where can they find you? And the last thing would be, even though there's a lot of inspiration going on anyways, what is your quick message of inspiration for entrepreneurs listening out there? So start okay. with where they can find you first. Go ahead. Okay. First, they can find me uh, on on the website of Game On. It's www.gameon-middle-group.com. And there is like a, a button there for contact us, or they can email me at C H E N, it's Chen, at gameongroupasia.com. They can reach you out to me personally, and they can ask you whatever they want regarding manufacturing, regarding e commerce question, China, shipping, whatever they can touch base with me, or join the Facebook group. If you are in, an entrepreneur, if you want to do business, do it. Don't just talk about it. 
Don't just, you know, scare, do it. You need to start, start already. Do the first step. This is how you succeed. Even if you fail, you succeed. You need to understand. So start. This is beautiful. Basic. Beautiful stuff. So if you want to do it, stop waiting. Do it. Even if you fail, don't worry. Game on. Okay. Game on. All right, everybody. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Ken, so much for, for sharing the story. I had a great time. I hope everybody else enjoys. Stay safe and healthy. Until next time. Bye bye.